Hey, Haley, welcome to the podcast. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited too. Yeah. So Haley and I kind of go way back. We went to college together. And so as we were going through our list of different career opportunities that there were for students, I was like, ooh, she works at a college level as kind of an academic advisor. So we wanted to hear her story. So Haley, can you kind of give us, excuse me, a little bit of your background? Yeah, so um, background wise, so when I was in school, I mean, I guess I grew up in Utah, so I am a local to Utah, if that's where your student body is from. Uh, grew up in Draper and uh, went to a university. I started off my university time at Utah State in northern Utah and uh, stayed there for a couple of years, kind of pursuing what I was good at in high school, uh, which was English and creative writing. Um, and I really wanted to be a writer. And, but then I kind of got scared away from uh, creative writing. I kind of had heard those myths and those stories that you can't get a job with that degree. Uh, so I got scared into journalism, which is the professional version of writing. Um, and I did enjoy the coursework. So we'll, we'll talk, maybe we'll talk more about that. Um, but I did get scared away from my first passion. Um, and then I actually ended up transferring to the University of Utah, where I finished my journalism degree and uh, then moved into graduate school. So uh, did graduate school and we'll talk, we can maybe talk more about that as well. Um, and then went into my profession uh, working with college students. And I kind of learned that I just loved what I was doing outside of the classroom as a student more than I actually liked my major. And I was like, how do I just be a college student full time? I just want to relive the first day of school over and over and over. Uh, and I found a way to do that through my profession. And maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but that's that's how I ended up where I am working as a career and academic advisor with college students so that I get to relive college every day and the excitement of figuring out what it is that you want to do with your life. And kind of just these four years of young in young adulthood that's just fun and figuring out who you are and what you're interested in and making mistakes and trying things. And I get to relive that with students over and over again. So I'm just happy this is where I ended up. That's awesome. Do you work mainly with incoming freshmen or do you have a variety? Do you, do you kind of follow students along as they go or how does that work? Yeah. So um, where I work, um, we kind of have different student populations that we work with, but I tend to work with mostly first year students because I work with undecided or exploring students, the students who haven't yet declared a major, or maybe they did, but now they're changing their mind. So it may be a sophomore or a junior, but it tends to be those students that are kind of at the beginning of their journey um, or reevaluating after some time and experience at college. So no specific age demographic, but it tends to be those at the beginning just because we're exploring and figuring things out. Love it. I love that. And I heard once there was a statistic that like 50% and maybe that's like a high number of students end up changing their major. So how, how many times would you say you're having a conversation for changing a major or as they're exploring and then they switch later? Because I think that's kind of a common misconception too. For sure. That is a deeply held belief is that everyone else knows what they wanted to be. And I'm coming in here and I have no idea. Uh, and students feel stupid. They feel behind. They feel rushed. Um, but I would say that uh, your statistic is actually low. And that probably 80% of students not only switch their major, but a majority of students will switch their major up to four or five times. So it's not uncommon. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's very That's higher rare. than what I thought. It yeah, might be. it's not surprising. Um, so most people will switch majors from what they came into college with. Um, and even if they do stay with the major that they came in with, most people are not working in directly in their field tied to their major. Um, so that doesn't mean that your major is a waste necessarily. It just means that there's a lot of versatility within the workforce to apply majors uh, in a lot of different places. Uh, so most people are, yeah, most people, I think only about 20% of people are actually working in the field tied to their major uh, by the time they get into the professional field. So. Yeah, which hopefully for our listeners, that takes a little pressure off, right? Because I think we have, like you said, there's this stigma of, oh my gosh, now you're a freshman, you have to figure out your life for the next 40 years while you're going to be working in a career. And it's like, okay, but situations change, passions yeah. change, you know, interests change, and it's okay to evolve. It's okay to change. 
And we need to stop looking at that as like, oh, well, you failed, right? Because you're not doing X, Y, Z aligned with your major. <laughs> right. Um, and I love that you touched on that, 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 you know, that people pick their major and then they stick with the career. That's kind of a, um, a, that's kind of how things used to be in the past. That was how our grandparents' careers worked, is that you found a major, you found a career, and you stayed with it for 40, 50 years, and then you retired with that same organization or company. And that's just not what organizations are seeing now. They're actually expecting that this, you know, these incoming students are going to have upwards of 20 careers over their lifetime. Uh, and so it's not unexpected that you're going to stay at jobs for a short period of time. And they're really looking for people and students that are versatile that can change and that um, that are flexible and not stuck and, and rigid with what they want to do or be, but actually have just the versatility and flexibility to change, grow and adapt because that's how the workforce is changing. Um, and I always tell my students like, you know, um, it's going to be hard to pick what you want to be when you grow up because probably the job that you want to do has not yet been invented. Uh, and that's what we're seeing now, right? Like nobody knew that Twitter was going to be a thing. And five years later, like that's a big employer, right? We didn't know what that Amazon was going to be a thing. Um, but as technology is advancing so quickly, new careers and needs are coming up. So we're seeing that what you want to be probably doesn't exist yet. So we can't plan for it. So we just need to help you prepare to be really flexible and awesome. Yeah. Building up a skill set. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that, and that speaks to the versatility of, you know, just having a degree is going to give you that competitive edge. It doesn't have to be necessarily a specific degree. And I read a book that talked about how, you know, even like an engineer, he's like, well, I would rather hire a C plus student who had the skills I needed with a different major than someone in my career field who maybe just skirted by and barely got the, the grades, right? Because they have the skills. And I think that's more a big part of what a college education is providing is the skills outside the classroom. Like you mentioned, that's the part that you're excited about. And just the learning that happens of critical thinking and problem solving and, you know, communications and relationships, all the things that are you're fostering outside of the classroom. It is important to have academic learning, but also personal skills and all that type of stuff. And so Kind of along those same lines, one of the questions we wanted to ask you, Haley, is what does education mean to you? It's a great question. Um, yeah, what does education mean to me? Um, I think it means being, you know, being a lifelong learner. That education isn't just doesn't just have to be something that happens formally, um, but the willingness to stay curious and to keep asking questions and I don't know. Yeah, just, I think curiosity. Education is a lifelong pursuit of learning new and interesting things and, and kind of recognizing that you're, you're never quite there, but in a, not in an intimidating bad way, but in a, wow, the world is awesome. There's so many fun things for me to learn and I can always grow and I can always change. Um, and you know, I do think there are certain areas in life where we do need a formal education, formal training. Like I really want an engineer that has had some specific training, right? I want the bridge to stay up. Um, right. But other than, other than that, you really can learn anything and, and figuring out how to meld what you're passionate about with something that the world needs. That's what education is. Um, and going out and having that kind of motivation to learn it, whether that's through formal learning in a classroom um, or not because the classroom setting isn't for everyone. And, and that's okay too. There's lots of ways to learn. Yes. And you're, and you're still a student, right? So you're still getting that formal education while in a career path. So you're doing both at the same time. And I'm sure you're also just learning from your surroundings and, you know, the situations that you find yourself in, like you said, that lifelong learning that we love to talk about so much. Um, so we talked about you, the students that you meet with being okay with changing careers and shifting. Do you see yourself doing what you're going to be doing long term, or do you think you might end up pursuing that passion of creative writing? Or what are your thoughts for your future? Oh man, that's the great question. You know, I always, <laughs> I always say like I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up because that is that's always changing for me. Um, I didn't think I would ever end up 
here. You know, I didn't think I was going to end up at this particular institution. I actually, when I first started here, I said I was going to be here for six months and then I needed to go somewhere else. And I gave them six months and now I'm here into year nine. And <laughs> I, uh, you know, I never expected that, but things just worked out and I liked my team. I liked the environment and I've just stayed in the organization, but I've changed roles within the same university. Um, and so it's kept things interesting, uh, knowing that I'm in a space where I don't have to do the same thing every day or even for every year, uh, but that there's room for growth within the organization and change. Uh, so I'm still figuring it out. Like this is, I'm in kind of version 2.0 of my career. Um, I worked with students doing new student orientation and working with student employees in a mentoring program. And now I've moved over to academic and career advisement. Uh, so I'm still with, under the umbrella of the university, but I get to change my role. Um, but do I see other things? Um, I've decided uh, I'm always pursuing creative writing. I decided that I would always be a writer and that it was whether I wanted to get paid for that or not, or like stake my livelihood on it. And I decided, mm -hmm. you know, I'll always be a writer, whether I'm getting paid for it or not. So I'm always writing. Um, I'm always pursuing goals of like last during COVID, I tried to write a novel in 90 days, uh, which I did. It's terrible. And I never got it published, but uh, it's something I'm always working on. I just decided it wasn't where I wanted to stake my money, uh, but the dream is always there. And I'm always working on it outside of work. Uh, and maybe someday, maybe someday it will be a full-time thing, but uh, I just decided that wasn't the priority, but it's still a huge part of my identity. Uh, and, you know, I get to decide what are my hobbies and what do I want to get paid for? Uh, that's, and that's, that's the decision. That's I so powerful that. though, because I mean, I, you know, so, something to keep in mind for our students that are thinking about what do I want to do with my life, with my career, finding something that you get paid for that either is aligned with your passions or at least allows you to continue pursuing your passions outside of work because we can become so consumed with just the grind of go to work, make the money, pay the bills. And if there isn't balance in life where we're doing the things that we enjoy or we at least can find joy in our work, then what's it all for, you know? So totally. I love that you can do that and you have the flexibility to say, you know what, I don't necessarily need to get paid for this. It's something I love and I'm going to do it anyway. So that's, yeah. that's cool. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. It's fun to, it's, you know, I think it's important. You touched on where in my life do I want to fit in the other things that I care about? And, you know, for me, you know, choosing career, a career path, you know, there are peers that did my graduate program with me that are way in way more nice jobs or more formal positions or higher positions than me at this point, because they, you know, I don't know, they wanted the prestige, they wanted a PhD. Um, I don't know what their motivations were, but sometimes I look around at them and I think I should be further along in my career at this point. I've stayed in a lot of the same jobs um, and not really advanced, but I just decided early on in my career that I always wanted to stay closer to students. And that meant that I would take a pay cut uh, or a prestigious title cut, uh, but that's where my priorities were. So if I could give advice to any students, you know, if, if they're not the type of person that feels this urge to climb the ladder or this pressure, um, or that they need a job that is 90 hours a week, and then they have no time for hobbies, uh, that it's okay to pick a normal job that just pays the bills and isn't fancy, but if it brings you joy and gives you the flexibility outside of your nine to five um, to do those things that you want to do, then it's good enough. Um, and I've really had to battle that and say like, okay, this is not a fancy job, but I get home at five and I don't have to stress about work. I don't have to think about it. And I can pursue those other interests I have. I can be with my family. Um, and so it's really about finding a career that fits with those values um, and what it is that you also want to do besides work because we are more than our job. Yes. Yeah. Shout that from the rooftops, please. Yes. <laughs> I feel like as a society, we kind of like wear the grind and the hustle and the titles as like a badge of honor of like, oh, look at me. I'm so prestigious, but I work 90 hours a week and I have no life. Right. And so it is, it's a matter of evaluating your values, where you want to end up and yeah, a quote unquote normal job pays the bills. And then you have time to pursue those passions, which I think 
is so crucial because I keep saying it like at the end of the day when we all die like none of us are taking our money with us or our titles or the possessions we've gained right all that we're taking with us is like our character and our memories and the things that we've done and so kind of evaluating yeah what's what's more right. important in life right and right. and for some that might be the driving you know force is like they enjoy that climb and yeah. constantly getting to the next level and if that's your passion if that's what you want to do do it but it's not for everybody so so important for sure yes wise words <laughs> so, right. so you've kind of already given advice to our students but what would your advice be for maybe somebody that is interested in pursuing a career at a university specifically what what would your advice be to them sure. so um there are a lot of different things you can do within a university i always say that a university is kind of like its own little world it's its own country with lots of different roles and positions um, and so some people think like if i wanted to work at a university i have to be a professor right that's the only job at a university is that i teach um, but there are lots of roles within a university. Um, it's kind of this microcosm that needs has lots of running parts. Uh, so I would say if you wanted to work, you know, at a university, it could be, you know, finding an area that you're passionate about. So if it is a specific area within teaching or something like that, you'd really need to become proficient in your area. That may mean getting an advanced degree, um, such as a master's degree or even a PhD to be a faculty member. Um, and so being willing to be in school for a long time and have your area of expertise. If you really love history, you wanna be a history professor, that's one route into the university and teaching students about history. Um, but there are also other roles within the university like mine um, considered an administrative role where um, some, I run anything outside of the classroom on a university campus. So that could be something like I do, which is advising students about their careers or majors. Um, it could be running the dining facilities on campus um, or the housing for students, the residence halls on campus uh, and overseeing student employees that work there um, or doing different things like that. So there's so many roles within the university. So if you are interested um, in working at a university, it's just getting familiar with the types of roles. So whether that's academia, administration, I mean, security, like a police department on campus, like there's so many things that you can do. Um, and so just knowing that it's a big, it's a big little world uh, and that there are lots of opportunities. Um, most positions at a university at this point are starting to require at least a master's degree level um, or, or something like that for an administrative role or for teaching. It's very rare that you can get into teaching at a university without an advanced degree. So if you're the kind of person that's like, I do not want that, I only want a bachelor's degree, um, there may be some lower level administrative roles that you could do, like an office secretary or something like that, that are bachelor's degree only. Um, but that's something you have to keep an eye on when working at a university is how much education is required to do that mm. role. Um, and as far as moving up, um, the biggest seller for any job, whether that's at a university or anywhere else, is I would say is just get experience. Um, get experience in lots of different places. Um, like I knew I loved college and I just wanted to stay at college forever, but I didn't know what my area was, like what, what kind of students I wanted to work with. So when I was a student, I had lots of different jobs. So I was a resident assistant. And so I hung out with students where they lived and made sure they were safe and did things. Um, I also did, gave campus tours and showed incoming students about the university and did presentations for parents and families. I went into high schools and did recruitment with real professional recruiters, even as a student, to talk to high school students about why it was cool to come to the University of Utah uh, and just like dabbled in lots of different areas to figure out what part of the university do I love the most. Um, and that kind of helped me see some of the jobs you could have on campus because I could do them as a student and kind of dabble there and see where I wanted to end up. So that's, that's how I cool. ended up where I wanted to be is just by working with those doing student employed jobs. Uh, where I actually got paid to do the work as a student. And then I decided I wanted to do that as a professional eventually someday too. And some work I did for free. So being willing to do things for free, like campus tours, I got paid in lunch. I would do the tour <laughs> for free and then they would feed me after. So uh, when in doubt, just do opportunities where they pay you in food and t-shirts just to get experience. Uh, and it, it was worth it for me. I loved it. I feel like as a college student though, right? Like getting paid in food is not uh, the worst thing ever. Yeah. It was awesome. 
It was like two or three days a week. I knew I had lunch guaranteed. Yeah. And that was so nice. And it was so fun to meet families and just like to tell people why I loved college. It was so fun. It was like the best gig in the world. I would, I would do it for free today if they would let me. Right. I was going to say, and I, I was apparently cheaper because I went for the free t-shirts. Like I had probably like 45 t-shirts from my college career from just free events that I volunteered at. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a great way to get experience. And who doesn't like free t-shirts? So. I, I, I made them all into a quilt because I was like, I can't be that hoarder that's like <laughs> holding on to shirts for 20 years. <laughs> yes, I have one of those quilts too from, from yes. undergrad and grad school. So that's that's awesome. awesome. So, so fun. Yeah, but I love that. I love what you said. It's kind of about, you know, what you've already spoken to about just exploring it, getting out there, seeing what opportunities there are, finding those internships where you can volunteer or, you know, if there's, yeah, a field that you're like, hmm, I don't know if I'd be good at this. Well, go volunteer, go talk to someone, go talk to a professor, right? Or your neighbor or whoever that you have in your life that has experience within that field, kind of pick their brain to see if it is something that aligns with what you would want to do. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think that's great advice. Um, and then I think just one more question that I have for you, Haley, <laughs> this is what we always like to ask all of our guests is if you could go back in time and talk to yourself in high school, what advice would you give yourself? That's, um, that's a great question. Um, I would tell myself that life is not going to turn out like I expect, and that's okay. Uh, and I would probably tell myself to stay with creative writing. <laughs> so I, I really would. I don't know why. I would stay with stay with what I love but go out and get a lot of experience. Like that experience is the key. Um, and that I don't have to know what it is that I want to do right now. You know, that was like seven pieces of advice, but um, maybe that's the one I would stick with is it's okay to not know what you want to do right this minute, but start making, getting experiences and developing a lot of skills so that I can be prepared for whatever comes my way. Um, and just having the confidence to try lots of things um, because I don't know what I want to be when I grow up, but at least I have a lot of great skills so that I can be lots of things. Uh, such, such great wisdom. Such oh, great wisdom. It's, it's true. It's honestly, and, and as you were talking before, just about like not knowing, like sometimes the job that you want or your perfect job just isn't out there yet, or maybe you don't know about it or whatever. Like I never saw myself in online education until I just found myself in online education. And it was like, whoa, yeah, here we are. This is kind of cool. Did not even think that this was an option when I was in high school. So being open to the ideas and the experiences that we come across and just approach everything with that open mind, like, you know what, we can try this out and maybe I'll love it. Maybe I won't, but it's just one more experience to add to your book. And yes. yeah, I love it. It's great advice, Haley. Yeah. Yes, I love that, like saying saying yes to things. I'm going to show you something really quick. I know this is kind of random, but it fits with what you're talking about. Um, I'll show you this item I have in my office. Awesome. Okay, so this is like a mini door. It's literally a door replica. Yes. This is, and this was given to me by a, a mentor of mine in grad school. And it's like my most prized possession because it's a reminder to me to always keep my door open um, because I never know who's going to walk through that door and change my life or whose life I can change. Um, and so it sits there as a reminder every day, just to remind me that there are doors that I have not yet found, but that if I'm willing to walk through it or to allow someone else to walk through my door, there are going to be opportunities and things that I could not have expected. And my life has always gotten better by walking through unexpected doors. So that would, that would be part of my advice. It's just walk through open doors uh, that are that are provided for you and be willing to keep your door open. I love that. And I think a lot of times it's that working through the discomfort of doing that, right? Because it's like, we want to stay safe. We want to stay where we're comfortable. But what's on the other side of that door could be your big job, you know, that you've been wanting or some passion that you didn't know that you had or some relationship that's going to change your life. And so I love that attitude of just being open with possibility, being confident with taking that risk, because that's really what it feels like in your body when there's a new door. It's like, should I do this? Should I not? Should I really 
you do? Yeah, it's scary. And open. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of doors is that they swing both directions, right? We feel like everything is so permanent. Uh, and that if I pick this one door, I'm stuck with it forever. I pick this one major, I'm stuck forever. Uh, but you can always walk through it, try it out and say no, nope, and turn back around and come back out. Like very few things in life are deeply permanent. And I think having that courage to walk through some of those doors, um, even those ones that you're like, I don't think this is for me, but I'll try it and see what I learn about myself uh, can be really awesome. Yes, I love that. Well, thank you for your time, Haley, and for your words of advice. I think that's awesome. I'm like, now I need to print a door picture or something for my wall. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I would be so honored. I feel inspired. <laughs> that's great. Awesome. Well, that. anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? Uh, I don't think so. I think just go forward with courage and let life unfold. Um, and you already have within you what you need to be successful. And it's just, you have time to figure out what that is. So yes. Love it. Well, thanks, Haley. Yep. Thank you it. so much. Yeah. yeah. So great to see you, Haley. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it was so nice to see you.